Hi everybody! If you hate adding shared parameters in Revit one by one manually, then you will love what I'm about to show you. You can automate this kind of task with PyRevit, and I'll break down all the steps you need to know in this video. And also, if you are a non-programmer and you want to get this finished tool for free to automate your shared parameters, you can let me know in the comments all the controls and features you would want to get in such tool. I can create it and add it to EFTools extension later, but in this video I want to firstly focus on absolute Revit API basics so you can begin automating it on your own as well. And here's what we're gonna do. First of all, let's go to Revit and I already prepared here a button in my PyRevit extension. If you are new to PyRevit, just know that it's very simple to do and you can search for PyRevit starter kit and you will find my tutorials and actual template that will help you to do it under 5 minutes. And if you already know how to create buttons, then here's what we're gonna do inside. I already started the code here, and right now there's just the hover kind of description of the button and the name of the button, and that's it. Now, the next, here's what we're gonna do. So first of all, whenever we begin, we always start with imports and variables. Let's put it here on the bottom of the main section. So I'm gonna paste it here. We need to import all classes from Autodesk Revit DB, and we will also use a few forms from PyRevit later during this video. Also, as usual, I'm getting my variables. You will need our app, doc, maybe UI doc, and we definitely will need Revit year, because there is one change in Revit API documentation before and after 2024. So we will need to address that. And now next, let's actually quickly go to Revit, because I forgot to show you, and just manually do the task once. It really helps to automate it when you kind of do it manually, but really slow. I'm gonna go to project parameters, and obviously I wanna add here a new shared parameter. So I'm gonna click here, Normally, you kind of, first of all, you select your shared parameter. In my case, I have a very simple file. Just, let's say, I want to bring the para parameter B. Next, you decide, is it a type or instance parameter? Then you also want to decide what kind of group it relates to. Maybe it's going to be, I don't know, like uh, anal analysis results. And obviously, you need to select the categories to which it's going to apply. Let's select maybe views, maybe walls, I don't know. It's up to you, but in general, these are the steps you do manually. And now we will need to replicate all the steps in the code. So first of all, we will need to get our shared parameters. Then we will need to decide, is it type or instance binding? We will also need to add the categories and we will also need to select parameter group. Now let's close that. And now we're gonna do it with the code. And to do this with the code, there are a few things you need to know. First of all, we will need to use doc uh, parameter bindings. And this is the file which, where all the parameters are located. And there is a method called parameter bindings insert, and it takes three arguments. It takes a parameter definition, it takes what it takes, a binding, is it instance or type binding, and it also needs a parameter group, so it knows where to relay this parameter. Now, to do that, first of all, we need to get our definition, and it refers to the blueprint of your parameters, and we can get it from shared parameter file. To get it, let's go to the main section, and I'm actually add, gonna add it here that, first of all, we're gonna access shared parameter file. To do this, we will use the app variable, and we will use open shared parameter file. If you don't have shared parameter file defined in Revit, then you also need to kind of make the check and create the alert that shared parameter file was not found. Because as you know, when you click on shared parameters, here you're supposed to have a path. If you don't have it, then you're not gonna get it and you're gonna get an error. This will help you avoid it. Now, once you do that, we can go through shared parameter file and sort all parameters. Here's a little code we're gonna use. And here you can see, we're gonna sort all parameters in shared parameter file. I'm gonna use a dictionary, and then we're gonna iterate for group in shared parameter file groups. Then we're gonna iterate for parameter definition in group definitions, because that's how it's structured. And then we'll just combine. Here is gonna be the group name and parameter definition name. And then we're gonna create this dictionary, which later we're gonna provide uh, inside of the form. So this is our dictionary. Now we can just provide, provide it to the user and let them ask it. Here, I'm gonna paste it like this. Here you can see we're gonna use PowerRavit forms to choose shared parameters. Inside, we, we're gonna use form select from dictionary and when you're gonna show it, we need to provide a few arguments. We need to provide sorted dictionary shared parameter keys. These are the visible names which we define right here. Then we want to allow multiple select, and for the button name, I'm just going to write select parameters. And when you're going to get kind of selected names, we also want to convert it to actually parameter definitions. So we're going to get the values from the dictionary. Just going to iterate and say from the dictionary of shared values, give me parameter name for name in selected parameter names. That's quite simple. 
And at this point, I really would like us to kind of go and test it. So I'm just gonna put here the print statement. I'm just gonna go and see if selection works. And I really recommend you to test as much as often as possible because it helps you detect errors early on and just address them. Now I think, I, yeah, here is my button. So I'm gonna click on it and here is the menu. There is like these three parameters and this is okay. This EF right here is the group where it's located and then there is the name of the parameter. So let's say I wanna take these two, click on select parameters. I can see that I'm printing a list of names of selected parameters and then here I'm actually getting external definitions. This is what we need. And this is exactly the first argument that we needed for parameters binding insert method. Now we're gonna go and define the next one and this is gonna be about parameter binding. It can be instance or type. And here's how to do this. There is this method and to create a parameter binding we will also need category set. So we know for which categories is gonna be applied. Now to do that, first of all, let's comment out the print statement and we're gonna create our new category set. To create the category set, we need to use app create new category set and then we can insert any categories we want. But keep in mind, you're not supposed to provide their built-in category, you need to provide their a category. And there are different ways to get it, this is one of the simplest one. I'm gonna use category class, and then there is like a public method, get category. It needs a document from where we are getting it and it also needs built-in category. So category and built-in categories are two different elements in Revit API. And in here you can also provide more. Let's say I wanna also have OST walls, that's also fine. Then you would also need to come here and say, this is category wall, and we provide it there inside as well. Now you have your category set, so we define which categories you wanna apply this parameter to. The next one, we need to create our parameter binding. And you just decide, do you wanna instance or type parameters? And here is how you create it create new parameter bindings, you're going to use app, create new instance binding, category set, or you're going to create it as new type binding. So you decide here, do you want the first one or the second one? There are also different ways to create this instance binding. I think there is something like instance binding and it has a constructor which also takes category set. Might be wrong with that one, but there is something like this as well, but it doesn't matter which one you use. Now, once you have this, the third argument that we needed is the parameter group where we're going to place it. And this one is a little tricky because you see there are two ways to do this and we need to do them both. Firstly, we can create it with built-in parameter group enumeration. We just kind of use it, then you put it here and then you can see there's parameter group analysis results, for example. And this works fine until 2024, but during 2024 they marked it as obsolete and they mentioned that from now on we actually need to use different argument. Instead of built-in parameter group, we need to use for forge type ID and I think there is something like class type ID. So for that, we would actually need to do it like this. We take group type ID class, and then we get analysis results from there. And we just now need to decide which code runs in which version. And for that, we actually gonna have a look right here at the Revit year, because this is gonna return us, is it 2024, 2025, and so on. And it's gonna be an integer, because we convert it. So we're gonna come back here, and we're just gonna write if Revit year is more or equals 2024, we're gonna get it like this. And if not, we're gonna get it like this. This is like a simple way to create two code snippets for different Revit API versions. And just before we're gonna go further, let's just quickly come here and I'm gonna show you. For example, in here in the bindings method, here's the insert method. And you'll notice that in 2024, it's gonna say obsolete right here. We used to use this built-in parameter group and then it says like, okay, from now on, actually we need to use forge type ID. And you can see here is also this method right here on the side. This is the newer method. And right here it says forge type ID. Forge type ID is, it's not what exactly you need to use. It's like a parent class. But here you can see you need to use group type ID. So usually you write here group type ID and you'll see there is this group type ID class. So when I'm gonna click on that one I think if I'm gonna go to properties, you'll notice that all of these values, they are inside as properties. Have a little different name, so in here it's gonna be analysis results. And this is exactly what we provided right here. All right, so this is select parameter groups. Now, the next one, we wanna add this parameter. To do this, we need to do the following. So 
First of all, to make any changes to our projects, we need to create a transaction and we need to start and commit it. And all the changes have to be in between. And to do this, I'm just going to paste this snippet. And now I can see. We're going to iterate through parameter definitions inside of our selected parameters. Also, I'm going to add try and accept just to make sure that I'm adding successfully or not. And then we're just going to use doc, parameter bindings, insert. And we're going to provide these three arguments. We need our parameter definition, our binding instance of type, and parameter group. And categories, they are already included inside of our new instance binding, right? This is where we, right here, created the category set, and then we added it right here. And this is pretty much the complete tool, and this is supposed to add the parameters inside your project. Lastly, we're just going to go and test it. Just going to go to Revit, click on the button. Let's see. It asks us to select some parameters. Let's say we want to add all of them. And then you can see added parameters successfully, because this was my print statement. And right away, right here, you can see these three parameters. They're locked right now because I think they're controlled by the view template. Let me just disable it. And I can see they unlock and I can write here a new parameter. All right, guys, and I hope you found this useful and you will start automating your shared parameters. If you are new to Revit API or Power Revit, then I suggest you to grab my free ebook, Beginner's Guide to Revit API. It will provide you a roadmap and help you get started. And if you have any other Revit API questions, just let me know in the comments below and I'll try to explain it in another video or maybe newsletter. And I wish you happy coding and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.